Hello, dear friends. May God abundantly bless each and every one of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, be blessed. You who believe in the one whom God sent to save your life, your soul, be blessed. You who believe in him, be blessed. It does not matter the church, the religion that you go to. What matters is your consideration towards the one who gave his life for you. So, when a person respects, they respect, they acknowledge, they acknowledge what Jesus did for them, then they are believing in him. And consequently, they have the right to receive his favors, his blessings. We've been speaking about honoring father and mother, which is a commandment. It's an order from God to every human being. And to honor father and mother is not to worship them because we must worship only God. Only God. Only He is worthy of all the adoration and praise. Only He is worthy of adoration. However, when it comes to parents, children have the obligation to respect them, to honor them by showing respect. You respect your father and mother, then you respect their authority over you. You believe that they are higher authority than you because you were born from them. That's how it happens. So when we honor our parents, we are considering them, considering them, respecting them, and that's what God wants from us towards our parents, because the parents represent, they typify God himself. Isn't God the creator of all things? Very well. When we bring a child into the world, then God gives us the authority, His power, in order for us to bring a creature or generate a soul into this world. So when the son or the daughter acknowledges the authority of the mother and the father, when the children honor their parents, and respect them and consider them as their master, their Lord here on earth, then they will be considering God as well. And this is so simple. It's worth even making a retrospective here and meditate about my parents, for example. What I'm trying to tell you, just as an example, my father and my mother, there was actually seven of us, or there were seven left because many died due to the critical situation they lived at the time. So they gave birth to seven children, seven children. All of us, respected them very much, very much. So none of us became criminals, 
thieves or turned to drugs and were addicted to anything. None of us. All of us fulfilled our mission to live and get married and establish a family, etc., etc., etc. Just one, one of us, just one, let's say, deviated from this blameless conduct when he started to get involved with other women and he obviously gave birth to children with one woman here, another woman there, and even more, with three different women. And what happened to him? He died much younger. He left us too young. And it's not that God punished him, but it's because he broke that divine order and discipline. It also happened in the case of Esther or Esther's family. They were eight inside of the house, eight children who were all brought up in the same manner with respect and reverence towards their parents, honoring their parents. And all of them got married, established their family and so on and so forth. Just one of her sisters had the misfortune of marrying a young man who didn't have the same upbringing that she did. So the marriage was undone and she married again. She married again but married with a person who was of God. So she was able to restore her home. So all of us in general married and lived with our respective wives for many years. I've been married now with Esther for 53 years, now in December. So this shows that when we, or the children, that's what I wanted to show you, when children are brought up in the fear of the Lord, because to fear God is to respect the parents, is to honor the parents. When we are brought up within this standard, then God guarantees that we will have a long life and that things will be well with us. We are seeing this, and you, you know that. And I've learned by the Holy Spirit, this is a personal experience. After I met Jesus, that's when I had this instruction, this inspiration, this direction. When I got married, I knew I had the full understanding that if I had married someone, a woman who, a young lady who didn't have the same principles that we had with our parents. If I married a young lady who was rebellious towards her parents and disrespected them and so on, that didn't honor them, I knew that things were not going to work with me. And then my salvation would be at risk. So I prayed, I asked, I talked to God, I asked him to send the right person. And then Esther and I met and God sent Esther to me. So you may have heard people say these. Back in the day, people used to say this. My mother used to say this, that when the girl is a good daughter, the boy is a good son, then the good daughter is going to be a good wife and good mother. A good son who respects his parents and honors them, he will be a good husband and a good father. Because this is the order. It's a divine discipline. But such discipline and order starts with honoring the parents. And when a person honors their parents, when they respect the parents, Deep down, they are respecting God himself because the 
parents typify God in the life of the parents, the Creator. He's the one who gave us conditions to bring forth all the lives. This is very important. Therefore, you who are going to get married or start a relationship, you must think carefully. Because if that person that you're going to start a relationship with does not honor their parents, does not respect them, or they rebel against them, for sure, they will also rebel against you. And your marriage won't work. And this is the reason why many families were destroyed. You know that the most difficult thing, one of the hardest things in this world is to be in an unhappy marriage. Because when you live with a person who is different from you, brought up with different principles, and you have to live with that person and adjust to them, it's very complicated. It's very difficult. So, in the example of Esther's family, there were eight children. In my family, my house, we were seven children. And we came to this conclusion by the Holy Spirit that if I had met a young lady whom I truly liked and fell in love with, and I had given myself to her, but for sure, if she didn't have the principles that I had, that I had received from my parents, it was not going to work. No way. God sent to me the right person that matches perfectly with me. Praise God. Praise God. But it's interesting that she has a sister that married wrong. She married a young man, you know, very childish, very immature, right? He was from a very rich family, and she thought she was marrying well because he came from a rich family. However, it didn't last long. Why? Because that young man did not respect his parents. So her marriage didn't work. But as she had received and learned good principles from her parents, she managed to restore her home. She had the privilege to restore her home. She had children with her second husband. And they live wonderfully well. Why? Because God honored that young lady. God honored her. She was faithful to her parents, to the principles that she received from God. But the same didn't happen with my brother. He married well, very nice wedding, but due to the fact that he didn't behave himself with principles that he received from the family, and he was, let me use the right word, he was an humanizer. An humanizer. You know what I mean, right? So, his marriage was undone once and twice, and a third time again, and he died young. Young. Why? Because he did not keep the principles that our father and mother had taught us. So I say these, dear friends, for you who will be in a relationship with someone, make sure to check if that person honors and respects their parents. It's not just to love. Oh, I love my mother. I love my father. No, that's not what it is. This is normal. But to respect them. Sometimes the person loves their parents, but they don't respect them. So, see carefully. Use this as a principle. And it's not enough for the person to belong to the same church, the same denomination, because we are seeing this as well inside of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. Many youths get involved with all the youths in the church, and they want to get married, but that youth that has godly principles and filled with the Holy Spirit, marry 
another young person who doesn't have the spirit of God, that doesn't have the fear of God, who doesn't respect their parents, then they will marry and their life will be a live in hell, even though he may be a pastor, for example, because he married someone who doesn't have the principles of the word of God. Did you understand, dear friends? And this is important because you see that the world is a living hell because the family has been destroyed. That's all. That's it. We've seen yesterday, we read the sad example of Esau. God hated Esau. He hated Esau and did not allow him to inherit the birthright because he was rebellious. He rebelled against his parents. He was rebellious. He did what displeased his parents on purpose. So I'd like you to think carefully about this because the life of mankind, the human beings depend on that. The world is in such chaos because marriages don't exist anymore. People just get in together. They move in together. And then they give birth to children who are rebellious. Children who are revolted, who will get married revolted and give birth to more revolted children. And what will happen? This will happen. Billions of human beings revolted. And we have a world out there in such case. We are living the end of times. Jesus said that in the end of times, the love of men would grow cold. This is the love that grew cold. Marriages are done and undone. Okay, if it doesn't work, sometimes the person gets married already planning. Okay, if this marriage doesn't work, I already have somebody else in mind. That's the reality. So, dear friends, when you get married, I think, I believe this way, it's my faith, it's my faith, and I pass this faith on to you, those who want it, amen, praise God. The principle that I follow is this, God first, he must be first in my life, the first. It's the vertical beam of the cross, my relationship with God. Secondly, in my life, my relationship with my wife. So God first, my wife second, which are the arms of the cross. So Esther and I form the arms of the cross. This is the cross that Jesus said. I believe this way, that Jesus said, he who wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross. This is the cross that we must carry. Praise God. Praise God. God first and then the wife. So you who are watching me right now and are planning to get married, you are so worried about the house, the clothes, and the wedding dress, and what you're going to wear on the day of your wedding day, you should worry first about this. Is this person that you're going to marry to? Because when you marry someone, when you are joined to someone, when you live with someone, when you have a sexual relationship with a person, you and that person become one flesh. Imagine you becoming one flesh and being divided within yourself. It's living hell. Yes or no? So look for someone who has these principles of respecting and fearing their parents. If this person fears their parents, respects their parents, you see that their behavior towards their parents is good, then you believe me, that person if it's a woman, she will be a good wife and a great mother. Now, if it's a man in case, you're going to marry him. If he's a good son, he's going to be a good husband. If he's a good son, he's going to be a good father. This is the principle of intelligent faith. 
the faith that reasons, that considers, that adds up, that calculates, and then it makes a conclusion. No, that's it. That's what I want. So the principle of marriage is extremely important in your life. First, we fight for people to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The first thing, their relationship with the Holy Spirit himself. As it's written, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So first, you and God. Afterwards, it's your marriage. You and the person whom you are going to live your whole life with. This person must fear God. This person has to respect and honor their own parents. Did you understand? But then someone may ask, but Bishop, what if, if his parents passed away, he doesn't know the parents, how is it going to work? It's the Holy Spirit. He will have to have the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, you make it a point that he also has the Holy Spirit. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you won't care if he doesn't have him. But if you do have the Holy Spirit, you are going to look for someone who has the same spirit that you do so that your marriage may be happy. And I can tell you that. I can tell you that. I can teach you that. I can preach about marriage. Actually, not only myself. Myself and my colleagues, the pastors, the men of God who serve in the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. When there's one who doesn't follow this discipline, sooner or later they leave the work of God. May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.